All right, I started a press conference by saying that Krakow was such a great place, which is true. However, during the press conference, I said that I could see something alarming. And it's true not only about Poland, but Europe as such. The generational exchange is sort of slow, hindered. All the time we hear the same set of great names. Yes, they are great. I won't criticize them. However, it is alarming that Come Festival, for example, all right, a young film was selected, but when you look at the gallery of names, these are the names that we have seen for years. And a journalist who used the term honorary award winner, honorary jury, the word honorary reflects reflects the, reali the reality. Well, all these people are to be admired. However, from your point of view and from the point of view of the places that you should assume soon, it's not satisfactory. Well, recently I could see Polanski uh, joining the presentation of his film and I remember this meeting 20, 30 years ago. He came to Poland for the first time after the, that long time. He visited film school and there was a crowd there and one of our colleagues, who's a late colleague now, alcohol was stronger, asked the following question, said, you're boasting and boasting, but one day all of you will take your place. And then Polanski looked around, took this pause and say, when I look at you, I think none of you will. Well, okay, it was perhaps not true to life because in the room we also had Kishlowski who did have a big career. However, I would say that in the room there were so many people and as for their expectations and dreams, not everybody was successful, not everybody had a career, and I think we have to remember about it. And when we meet here during our workshops, all the time, the cries are repeated. The cries associated with the fact that it's so very difficult to get through. Finance is resources, selection is not fair, the system is bad, and other things. And when I look at it from a distance, I think I should share some anecdote with you. Some of you know it, uh, but it's still a good anecdote uh, and quite relevant to the philosophy that we apply here. Quite a long time ago, or even very long time ago, more than 25 years, I was making a film in Australia, and after shooting, when I was going home and I lived next to the Bond Beach, and I then met the actress of Sam Neill's Rustic Park, yes? He starred in this movie in piano, yeah? Obviously, he also starred in piano in very many American films, and he also starred in a Polish film in which I uh, worked as a DOP. It was Zanussi's film on the Pope. And as an American actor, he invited me to join him for a, a gala dinner. He introduced uh, me to his wife and sitting next to her said, if you ever divorce, remember, next wife should be Chinese. They are best wives. Nobody, <laughs> he was not ashamed by the fact that a Chinese woman was next to him. And then during the dinner, he said, you know what, I constructed villa in New Zealand and I said great and you know why in Great Zealand obviously I didn't know I never made it to New Zealand so I didn't know whether he why he chose the place and then he said you know what chap it's the only place in the world in which I will not meet anybody from Hollywood you know the answer in the front of the villa <laughs> well it happened just to one because of one person Peter Jackson Sai. Beria, at that time, in the map, turned it into a capital city. 
into a real center, something that changed the image of the island. And he did it with a very simple trick. Americans make films around the world. They don't shoot in New Zealand only. They make lots of films. I even myself worked in Morocco with them. However, the difference between what Peter Jackson did and the films of other locations, American makes a film, then they leave the place and they leave a desert behind them. But him, with economic tools, he convinced people it's better to make a trilogy and invest in infrastructure and it will be much cheaper than to transfer things. He said he will find better specialists and he will find local infrastructure. He will not rent it from elsewhere. And he was successful. The film was completed, but the infrastructure remained there. Sound stages remained there. And one of the best visual effects house remained there as well. And a great number of specialists were developed. I remember I talked to uh, the film director. I was not able to work in this film. And obviously the address for the film was New Zealand. And in the meantime, lots of uh, movies were made there. Single person, so it's possible. So our inability to act. You will have to think how to change it. Well, surely all of us complain about uh, too little work. However, you forget when you look, for example, well, the pre-visualizations that were sent to our competition five months ago. We opened this competition and two things I found really surprising. We had very many of them. We didn't make any great promotion and we got 13 films, 40 minutes each, and these films were different, better or worse, however, there's a common feature. I have an impression that they are turning their back to the viewers, as if the authors of the film did not think about the rain pouring down, and just one more droplet in the pouring rain wouldn't make any difference. If you have haze or if you have droplets going from the ground level upwards, it will be something different. But we are surrounded by lots of droplets of rain. And the fact that you add your own doesn't mean that you will be automatically noticed. And obviously this is one of the elements that should have an impact on the policy. Very often I feel, and the previews show it as well, when I watch students' films, students, beginners, they make films, they believe that somebody's waiting for their films. Nobody's waiting, nobody. It's much better a strategy when you think about your future works it's much better to imagine a viewer that hates your guts somebody who's hostile to you and you have to overcome the barrier of hostility and what happens is just the opposite especially at the beginning lengthy boring you if you are at the beginning of your journey you have to surprise the world you have to change the perspectives and by, well, we'll talk about it in a moment. We'll talk about this important issue that I think must not be forgotten about you, not only during the workshops. Uh, it should also be implemented when you make your own previsualizations. The contact between the viewer at the beginning of your film, the very beginning is very important. I remember this person who told me, an actor, told me once, when I act, I always think about Krieg. Krieg? Krieg is the moment when the viewer changes the channel into a different one. The click thing. Don't forget it. It's so important. We have such an access of audiovisual stuff that to keep me uh, keep my attention. You have to try very hard. 
and in dramatic expression. It's very important. The beginning is very important. And I feel that most of the prefaces that I watched, they were very traditional. The beginning was lengthy. So I think when you start making your movies, you should remember what I have just said. And obviously you complain about the system. It's not fair. It's not okay. And it really makes sense to think what we could change. But the system as such cannot be influenced. However... However, you can start and adopt utopic thinking. Every good idea starts with utopic thinking. And when I'm facing you, I'm puzzled by, by what happened. I never thought that FSO would be a place of lectures. FSO, or Film Spring Open, that started eight years ago. It was a meeting of 15 people from different countries that came to make films together, full stop. The problem is the people started coming back because they liked it and they grew in number and we had no idea how, how to use their potential properly. And then the idea was let's not treat it as a film watching festival. Let's treated as a filmmaking festival. The people should come here and do something, not anything outstanding. It should be a sandbox in which you play and learn things. At the beginning, I was the only lecturer, lecturer, mentor, a colleague. I used to sit down with them and I made comments or rather interfered when artists uh, had a quarrel and everybody was pulling the blanket into his end. It's one of the consequences of the system and we can change it. If you criticize the system as unfair, all the time you forget that your problem is sitting here in front of me. You make an incredible team power, but when you start acting, your ego is stronger and your group falls apart. When you start the bottle uh, my idea is better than your idea. You usually end up with a stupid um, war. Uh, you remember after the martial law in Poland, 300 Polish artists made it to Paris. Do you think that anybody made a career there? Nobody. Nobody. All of them sort of disappeared. But at the beginning, you had an impression that in the moment, in a moment, but... Mainly, they didn't make any career because they were not able to cooperate. Because right from the beginning, it was jealousy and nothing more. I use the word utopy because in a way, you know, all the time when I see, hear so many people, I'm afraid it will disappear. But there's a benefit of film spring. And you have to remember, this is something that usually does not exist in our professional life. I think. Because it is not an institution like a film school, and in film school, jealousy is the key element right from the beginning of your work. Jealousy is always with you. Acting against others, not with others. If with others, only in professional groupings. And here, looking for the key to select our visitors, we try to invite visitors not only to talk to us about their films, but also to share a lesson with us. Uh, during the co press conference, I said that Dorota and Arthur that come here, they are a great example of a family film production uh, company. Yes, they have survived various problems and they are so resistant to commercial influence they make their own films they live on them and they have functioned like this for over 20 years so it's possible and two years ago when they came here for the first time they shared their experience with us this year we will have Joasia Koskrauser with Krzysztof Krauser they work together and you have very many couples uh, around the world, mm, Taviani brothers, Cohen's brothers. Once I proposed this model of team artwork, because I still believe it's good, but perhaps it just does not appeal to people. A creative group, just like in pop music, you have a band with a common name, the Beatles, Rolling Stones, just to 
um, name the outstanding groups, they will make it faster, they will become known sooner. Well, unfortunately, uh, my message is not being accepted, but I think life will e require it from you. If we talk about the future, it's obvious that linear dramaturgy will disappear, something new will emerge, and we'll talk about it here, and we'll at least try to disseminate some knowledge about it, interactive show. And when we talk about the future format of a film art, this past acting is a must. In multiple plot storytelling, a single film director wouldn't make any sense. So it's terribly important when you are here, please understand you have to be utopic in your behavior. I remember a journalist came to me and asked me who had the greatest success in the Polish cinematography recently. I said, Marek Żydowicz. Yes, it's the biggest success in the Polish cinematography. And I can exactly remember the beginning. I was surfing in Euronata, Urata, and Zuzia Wapitka started waving at me. There was good wind. I didn't want to do it, but she was waving, so I did it. And she said, some chap came over and he would like to make a film festival. I was furious because I had to stop my um, surfing. And there was this 20 plus blonde boy talking about the festival of the OPs, but he wouldn't like to make any Polish festival, but international festival, and I thought he must be nuts. But this is just an example. It's an example of somebody who was extremely utopically minded. Those of you that know Kamarai Mash festival, you know that it was unthinkable in this country, and he just proved that it was possible. This festival is joined by outstanding artists from around the world and mostly from across the ocean and it's far and it's not easy and the climate in their hometown and in Bitkosch differ. I don't know how he managed but he did. I wouldn't like to think bad about Andrzej Waluk, he's with us, and I repeat his story all the time. If Andrzej Waluk did not buy a Russian 3D camera 20 years ago, he wouldn't become an outstanding stereographer. He invested in this little tool and he's constructing great things today. I think you have to think like this, and the utopic thinking is terribly important indeed. And now, with a bit of historical view, and it's a good lesson because. You don't, I don't want to be just the clever one. I would like to be practically minded. I would like to share with you a short story that perhaps will make you think. Well, I mentioned it during the press conference as well, and I would like to stress it again, not because I'm that proud. I remember what we made films when I was the cameraman. These films were made for specific festivals. 11 films that I made for Venice, three films in, in Cannes, in the competition, and two in Berlin. They were awarded films for which I produced. Um, the pictures were winners in Venice, and I also got some little awards for my photography. And now, for years, Polish films are not making their way there. and. I think our foreign colleagues have very same problems, but we also see certain dynamism in the countries where, well, I wouldn't compare Poland to Germany or France because these countries are much richer, and simply the states are bigger, but it's weird. Denmark, a small country, is much more successful than Poland. We used to be terribly successful, we were that well known for our films, something bad happens. When you look at Denmark, when you look at the educational system, when you look at good political moves, like something that I would like to share with you in a moment, the discipline approach. In Denmark, when they bought or received, how do you call it, uh, the island on which um, military troops 
uh, residue for some time. So they use this island for building an artistic school. So in the school you have a film school, musical school, acting school, um, architecture. I think what is missing are just fine arts. So artists from different faculties spend time together. There's space to talk for them. And one of the elements, there are many of them, I wouldn't like to bore you. However, you can clearly see that the success, well, Lands and Frontier, Billy August, the, it's not out of nowhere. They were brought up on a very fertile soil. I think if Larson Fortrill made it to the Wuch Film School, um, his films um, would be hated and he would be thrown out from the Academy in Poland. Well, we got successful in a very weird way because our films were not shot for the audience. We didn't care about the audience. We only pre Pair these films for festivals. Obviously, this model was ridiculous because, economically speaking, it was a rubbish. You got the money from the Ministry of Culture, so you made a film. If the film was successful, it was absolutely irrelevant because we were paid the same money for a good film and for a failure. There was absolutely no difference in our remuneration, and surely this model could not survive. It could only survive in the previous political era. However, in a normal, healthy economic system, you have to think what you can do to make films for the public. But you must not copy things. If you copy things, you have to do it in a clever way. If you talk about genre cinema, and this cinema is needed, you have to think deeply what is the chance in the fight with the big industry on the other side? And do we have a chance? And one of the utopic elements that must be thought about is the future. And what we propose here is a kind of attempt to make the two worlds meet. I hope there will be um, a good end to it. I had an idea. I got it two, two days ago. In the US, when they make these big blockbusters, they always do it together with a computer game. So for a Harry Potter, it was clear that it had to be turned into a game. Why couldn't we do the same thing in Poland, a little, little film for kids, nothing big, and at the same time a computer game? Isn't it a good business model. Does anybody think that you cannot make money in this way? And at the same time, do something interesting. So the merge of the two worlds that can potentially meet, they're not meeting yet. Do you think that such a business model could be successful? Surely it will be by the mere fact of its novelty. So ideas are lying in the street. And if any of you can use this idea, please remember I was the originator. I was the author of this idea. All right, so as I've said at the very beginning, according to your suggestions, we try to be future oriented. It's true about equipment. I'm so very proud that this year the presentation of the first RE Alex XT camera, the new model, will be made here during our workshop tomorrow. So we are kindly invited. And all the subjects of our lectures are not really academic in style. We try not to compete against the film school. We are not a film school ourselves. I hope you will have good fun here. You will make good films. And at the same time, you will use the lecturers that are important to you. And in a moment, um, I'll present the program in detail, interdisciplinarity. Well, film schools are really about a couple of professions, and the film architecture is much more complex. But really, when you talk about audiovisual future, then the merge between an artist and a software specialist is a must. In the intersection, revolutionary ideas will be formed, and the faster you build bridges between film professions, the sooner, in a couple of years, when your colleagues are still repeating the same mistakes. And it also happened during my time that your colleagues will be still at the starting point. However, you will be much farther thanks to your 
investment. And another thing that I thought about for a long time indeed, and I mentioned it already, the pre-visualization competition, previs competition, we were puzzled by the number of candidates. 13 films, it's a lot. 13 crews devoted their time to make something together. We really appreciate it and we are ready to support each and every film group. Obviously, we are not able to offer our care and a support to everybody. There are just a few of us, but one film has been selected already. Two films got an honorary mention. At certain moment, we'll have the announcement. And one of the pictures, I hope, will be made in future under, say, the care of Film Spring. But to make your debut easier is about something more. It seems to be quite simple, and it's one of the elements due to which most of you are still in the same place. We meet here every year, and I cannot see our participants that come here regularly. They are not really making impressive progress. And I believe I'll talk about it tomorrow in my lecture on film production. However, briefly speaking, I guess this problem is caused by the fact that since your birthday, so the school, the film school, you are making um, your short films, so it's a hundred yard run, yes? But you all dream about marathon. You can't prepare a runner for a marathon if he or she practices only a hundred yard run and we are going to have a separate course here on pre-visualization. I will learn together with you because I was never trained on it myself. There are different models and I'm frequently asked about my students why I don't have lectures on cameraman profession. I say, I don't know about it. I know what I do, but I can't have academic approach to the subject of cinematography, picture taking, uh, filming. I made many films in my life with great film directors, bad film directors, with psychopaths, people that talked more than did. And all my life was really about studying how to become a DOP, by comparing things, by watching things. And me, well, I studied in practice. No film school would give it to me. And I said it was, again, a marriage between gift and money. Certain things, very irritating. There are so many sensitive people. And when I have my lectures, and usually I have lectures for a week, then I do it for my own need. I've been doing it for over, over 30 years. My needs. And I mark for myself who's first to make a career. And I'm not really highlighting these that are most sensitive. Who's prone for success? Managers. Managers are first to succeed. And super sensitive people don't make a success. Kishlowski uh, didn't die because his health was poor. He died because the system was against him. But I will talk about it tomorrow. So when we talk about your future, dumb, do what you want right now. If the script is signed by Mr. Brown, nobody wants to read it. Uh, or somebody would read it, but just look through the text roughly. And it happened to me. Once I brought to a Team X some script, and Vida said, wouldn't you give the script to me? And the producer that has got a good script without... A young film director would naturally, naturally take the script and give the script to an experienced film director and wouldn't risk you, wouldn't risk investing in a film made by a young beginning filmmaker. So it's a tricky problem. I wouldn't like to elaborate on it, but uh, pre-visualization 
as an idea, doing something that would help you achieve your objective is very important indeed. And we can promise, well, first of all, we know the two premises selected by us uh, will be in a pitch um, in Mannheim. There's a group of producers that watch such material and select films for production. And uh, film spring 2014 will be devoted to pitching. So we will encourage people, we'll encourage producers to help you make your films and also ourselves having the mechanism I wouldn't like to analyze it now I'll talk about it in detail tomorrow when I talk about the new film production so briefly if you want to run marathon don't run 100 yard only because usually it finishes badly and you have to remember quite often making your first film as a bad film uh, will end your professional life, you're out of the club. However, it's good to look at biographies of outstanding film directors. Apart from marvelous stuff, each of them had a failure. Every single person, Fajda, Polanski, if they had a failure right at the beginning. I don't like uh, Vampirov uh, by Polanski, if it were his first film. He wouldn't be where he is today. All right, so we may offer, we may... Well, I talked to Dorota and she says she will be happy to do it, but at the end of the year, because now she is involved in writing a script. Perhaps I shouldn't talk about it, but I have said it already. However, I will do everything. Uh, the premises made by you should be under appropriate artistic care, we will try to do it. And in this sense, this is a project that will be supported by us, using our context with the industry. And as you can see, they are very responsive. Perhaps we will also be able to encourage others to share the resources with you. All right, I talked about the implementation techniques. We'll have a whole range of lectures. We'll learn from each other. And I would like to use the film Niebieski Blue as an example, because in a way, Kieślowski made uh, strange things. He made pre-visualization on a set, and the end film varied very much from the script. Those of you that got the script should read it, because then when we analyze it and when we talk deeply about it, you will see how far the film was from the initial script. And you often forget about the simple principle. A real masterpiece has its own life. We are not owners of what we do. It is never like this. Big things are bigger than your ego. And quite often, those that forget about the main principle, surely, without big ego, you don't have art. But on the other hand, the ego that's blind and death very often kills potentially promising things. In a very primitive way, we may say, very many film directors whom I worked with, they loved the idea after uh, editing and said, it's done. And then I said, you know what? It's the beginning for Kishlowski. You say it's the end. For him, it would be the beginning. All right. How to make thing, films cheaper and better? Previs is one of the elements. But there's a whole range of things that are growing on film production, like fungi, and with hundreds of years of cinematography, very often we make films that are utterly stupid, and I'm a walking example of this. In every country, films are made in a different way. We can see products from other countries in the screen, but we don't know how they were made. They're made differently. They are great 
patterns and silly patterns. Nobody studies this and nobody draws conclusions. And why? My profession is universal because it's language free, whereas the producer is always local. People don't share experiences, so they make weird things. And by definition, well, the definition uh, of the profession differs in different countries, but it's a different story. So we change this element. And yes, from Otosan, they will come tomorrow and you will see one of the elements of the rich, rich system, namely, this is a system, this is a bus built by the uh, Sun factory Cinebus. So a single van that's great for a small modern production. It would be the single one. You have all the technology in it and a small part um, as the changing room and makeup east room. So this model is going to be presented tomorrow. Our special visitor would be Mia Bays. Mia Bays is a young English producer. She established a microwave company and out of seven films made by her so far, they had a single thing in future the budget is not more than £140,000. At this um, budget, I remember in England I made a film at the cost of £180,000 uh, and it was a 40-minute TV film, so I'm really waiting anxiously for her lecture. And apart from that, we'll also have our young colleagues from the National Audiovisual Council, KIPA, and they will also have a discussion forum here on the financing. I think this forum will be very interesting for you. And also I would like to announce a thing that's not in the program. Boris Stokalski, a producer and over owner of a software company, will talk about uh, the intersection between the world of film and business. A very interesting lecture. I don't know the final title of the lecture, but I can already make an announcement. Boris Tokarski will come to you and will talk to you about this issue. I think it is uh, worth listening to, to learn something interesting. Well, what happens here reminds me of a laboratory. I have no doubt. Yesterday's rehearsal, it will not lead to, well, I would be happy if it could, it would not lead to a big, big film. But there's a power in setting up a laboratory, three groups that had nothing to do with each other, lab group. For them, it's a life passion, scouting, whole day life. This is the need of the second life that each of us, in a way, has. And in the highly civilized uh, society, this need is even stronger. So the meet, meeting between this group and filmmakers and software specialists, this is the moment. We try to encourage uh, to come here the people that can be helpful. And we Poles can be proud that the person that's like a renaissance guy, Zbyszek Rybczyński, he is a great artist, he's an Oscar Award winner, but at the same time he's a great technician. Perhaps you should not use this word, but he produces tools, makes all the software design work, and he's really special in this world the definition of uh, an artist of renaissance perhaps is the best way to express the width and, and depth of his um, experiences. Post-production course is going to be run by a lecturer from, a, from the Wood School, Rafał Hansel, and he promises, surely we have to know during a couple of days you don't learn all the intricacies of post-production. Uh, well, expect
experts try to make the technology user free user-friendly pardon however you won't master it without within a couple of days however if you want to continue your, your education both Rafał and Piotr Szczepanowicz from No Label are willing to offer you some course. Surely it will be a separate agreement. It is not a part of Film Spring, but I know that they are willing to do it. So please make your declarations. And um, there's also a novelty in the list. You don't have it in your program, namely Marek Poray. He's a Paul who completed a camera man school and he got a contract in Switzerland. There's going to be the first show soon. He hesitated, but we managed to invite him here. He cannot say too much because there are certain secrets that he must not share. However, the pre this virtual film studio idea will be shared with us. Not far away, Marek Polay in Switzerland. At the end of our meetings, he will join us. And I think that really borders on two things. Demonstration of what TVN has done. So their virtual film studio. Well, very often they make car action scenes. And what's interesting, they made this cost analysis and it turns out that shooting in their van is cheaper than to film things in streets. Very interesting if you think about the cost reductions. Last year, for the very first time, we had Neil Corbett, who is number one special effect special effect uh, especially so you know smoke dead bodies in screen mechanisms shooting bullets so all the weird stuff that has to be constructed on site this is what the guy does and he's an unquestioned number one and he loves film spring so much he said that he's doing Hercules in Budapest he will join us just to visit for one day and I think we'll manage to encourage him to have a meeting and perhaps he will have many interesting things to share with you. So we have an announcement. He will join us, I think, at the end of the workshop next weekend. Then we'll have the information posted in the information board. Interactivity. Well, I have mentioned it many times. I would like to underline it again. I'm very glad, Andrzej, once again, they punished you so much with the name. It should be Andrzej Mionsik. I got wrong information. No, is, is it okay? I'm sorry. So why? How come? I, I said Maciej before. All right. Okay. So you know what? So a double mistake. Okay, I'm deaf. I'm deaf, I misunderstood. I was guessing, I'm sorry again. So double or triple excuse again. Game Jam, this is an initiative by software specialists, Mr. Stokalski. This is their own initiative. We are so thankful for uh, they coming here. For what I know, the meeting between filmmakers and developers of games has already produced some effects. I know that they are working upon something and th they will share the information with you. We are happy that we have got such visitors. I have already talked about Dorota and the key to select our guests. This year, apart from Dorota and Arthur, we will also have Joanna Krause Kos Krause and Krzysztof Krause. Unfortunately, they cannot demonstrate the new film Papusha here. They were not given the agreement to do it. However, they will see some. They will show something, some scenes, some presentation. But they will have Nick for here, and I guess it will be very interesting. The artistic cooperation will have Sławomir Fabicki with his new film Miłość 
laugh and to new beginners beginners must be interested in respective of what you think about their films it will be very interesting to hear from them i will encourage them and yourselves also to ask questions about problems that they encountered problems to find the financing or problems they encountered during the filmmaking because this is the experience that we have to collect so that we could eliminate certain problems in the future and back to Dorota and Arthur, tomorrow you will watch a film that proves you don't need to have a lot of money to make something interesting. Tomorrow you will see a film which, well, Arthur, obviously, he had lots of great visual ideas. However, the, re the value of the film would be equally grey if they had only a single close-up on the actress that is talking in a fascinating way but also the composition of the film is fascinating it shows how much we went down to the dogs since world war ii a fascinating film about 97 year old outstanding Polish actress Szaflarska. As always, uh, we must not forget about short films. They will exist and they are fans of them. Orange has opened the competition. They will join us and and with the support of uh, Anna Maliszewska, they will make their clips in professional conditions. And at the same time, Anna Maliszewska will have a lecture on the rhythm, not only in music. Bogdan Ciworski and Jacek Szymczak the couple for three years, well, we are all very jealous because they always have the greatest audience. Uh, they make documentary workshops and I invite you to join the workshops. They're great. If you are not interested in feature films, this opportunity to meet masters is also um, a great thing and something that we are really proud of. The first show and as you can see, all the big corporations that are associated with the audiovisual industry are here. And for the first time, we will have the premiere of Barco and Barco Projectors and Ari. So you can see three names, very important here. Adrian Crench, Australian operator. He works mostly in Germany and he makes films. What's the name? His name, this well-known German actress. Whatever. Okay, he's a star. Schweiger, yes. Schweiger is the name of the person. So he makes these German blockbusters. Um, so these are action movies, all successes. And Adriana is a very precise cameraman he prepares meticulously to do work and he has um, some workflow based on Alex he will make tests with you so it's an invitation for a uh, cameraman that are interested in the workflow and because he's a person attached to Film Spring, he used to listen to my lectures and he joined us for Film Spring and uh, he was the um, organizer of production and he also had two lectures with Margosia Tusks. He's a film springer, Andrei Valok. I talk about him all the time and he brought his new tools with him. Three helicopters, yes? You have to be cautious because in one of them he took this um, uh, take and he had to run away from the helicopter that was running right uh, down on him. It's a joke. But he's very precious of his last 3D rig. He's making new ones constantly. And for the fans that fans of 3D technology, they have to join Andrei Valuk's courses. Lukash Baka, he came with his great with his father, with his great actor, with the great actor, Toyurata. It was the second film spring workshop. And he sort of remained with us. Um, he started studying in the school film. And, you know, the communication with all the companies. And he also, in the meantime, made two films with me. So all the equipment, thanks to him. Łukasz will be, will run a course. Perhaps we should rather say comparative tests of cameras. I guess many of you, especially 
cameramen that don't know what equipment to use when they start their filming journey. Such tests would be very precious for them, especially that Wukash would like to have these tests in extreme conditions. So it's not going to be a pure technical test, but rather a test when you can really show the border of how much, the limits of how much the camera can do for you. I encourage you to do it. And, well, it was such an attempt. It worked in the form of the demonstration that you could see before my lecture, professional helicopter. Yes, but all the time we are open, we hope that apart from the big corporations, we'll have producers of small equipment, uh, such as stands for cameras, some stabilizers, and so on and so forth. We are open to it. Producers, manufacturers, if you know any, please share your information with us, because I think it's a good place uh, to promote such products. We did not manage to encourage too many of them. In our plans, apart from the films that we have to show, well, this uh, showroom and the other one at the bottom, they are for you to use. Many of you brought your films, you would like to show them and discuss them. And as I've written, 24-7 screenings. Quite often I enter this room in the middle of the night and people are here, so film springers, those of you that come here yet another time, it's obvious, but if you are here for the first time, look, if you have anything to show, talk to the office, there's some order of screenings adopted, and the showrooms that are prepared here for your needs can be used by you, and we want your films to be shown. However, something that I would really encourage you to join, these are the screenings of selected premises, those that were selected by the jury, but also those that actors, uh, the producers wanted to show. Some people just don't want to show their premises. And I wanted you to be, please, delicate. These things have are not completed products. It's a starting point for discussion, but your presence, your goodwill uh, will definitely help the authors. Uh, and I think that many people are ready to change their ideas. And us as a community, we may help a lot. If you help somebody, then perhaps you are in need in a couple of months, and then you can expect similar reaction. Look, this is much better to fight in a group than to fight individually, because individually they will lose the author system uh, that's so popular in Europe. It is against us. Too much uh, comes from the US, and the pre-visualization technique may help us when we are sure that what we want to say is attractive, it is important. And I have a simple rule that I encourage people to adopt. Criticize things only when you have something else to propose. When you have nothing to propose, you just dislike something, shut your gob. Because critical approach, finding faults with others, leads to stomach ulcer in the artist. And perhaps people are willing to listen to criticism if with the criticism there comes a suggestion on how to overcome problems. We will also have a show of films of the Friendly Festival. And I'm not trying to mention the name because I will definitely mispronounce it. And I have Florent in in front of myself, I wouldn't like to distort the French word now. And the films of our guests, our participants, interdisciplinarity is also associated with the fact that the world that it's sort of organic, art without artists, you can have a film. However, the relationship is sort of, I always feel there's something rotten in it. I mean, the casting, selecting, there's something, there's something wrong with it, simply. 
And I remember when I started in the Wuch school in the 60s, then the filming and acting faculties were um, separate. And after relocation, we thought that these two worlds would got integrated, but it never happened. I don't know the school that well. I sometimes come there with lectures, but I have an impression that still they are in the same building. However, these are like two separate institutions. So I want to say for the actors, there's a separate project for actors, Cells in Love. And they will do it themselves. It's a kind of a new format, a very simple story. If you are interested, ask me later on. And basically, that's it. This is the end of my presentation. Um, I would like to help those that support us. Our sponsors are now shown in the screen without their support, without support of the film industry our meeting will not take place, so I would like to bow down to them. Thank you for the support and we'll try to make the best possible projects so that so that the films could really be fantastic with the equipment. Thank you very much. And I hope that the joy that was always associated with spring film will also uh, be felt this year. I know that for many of you this is holiday time and the reason to come here is just to have fun and I know that film spring is not the time can you can sleep but from time to time you have to try and have a good night's sleep and informally I would like to ask you for one special thing, a thing that moves me indeed with this amount of equipment with access of any control no bodyguards are employed here we only had a single case of a little theft little nothing disappears here so thank you again